Hey, hey, party people. I have Mariah back in the studio today. If you recall, when she was last in the studio, she draped a basic bodice on a dress form in muslin. And in this video, she's going to take that muslin and transfer it and create a paper pattern. We're gonna go through all the steps of the paper pattern in this video. If you have not watched the other videos, the tools video, the draping video, the sewing basic seams video, I am gonna have a link to all of my garment construction videos. I have a playlist. I'm gonna drop a link to that in the description box below. So I would re recommend you get caught up with that, especially if you're a beginner, before you start watching this. The beauty of video is we'll be waiting for you when you're done. All right, take it away, Mariah. So at this point, we already have our basic bodice uh, draped and we need to take it and flat pattern it. Um, I just gave it an initial press to just get some of the, the worst of the wrinkles out. Um, I'm gonna start with my center front. I went ahead and cut out some paper. Make sure that you have enough for both sides of the bodice. So this is our dot paper. Um, it's called dot paper, which is a little deceiving because everybody always asks, why aren't there dots? Um, there's little, <laughs> there's letters and little pluses on there. Each, um, each one, the center of each, equals a one inch square. So it makes it a little bit easier if you're trying to count out measurements, you know, a certain amount of inches along or keep your lines really nice and clean and straight. You don't have to do patterning on here. You can get butcher block, you can use uh, different kinds of paper, um, but this really is kind of the easiest way to pattern. So I'm gonna start with giving myself a center front line. So I'm gonna line up my ruler on the dots, the, uh, the little pluses, and line up my ruler exactly so that it's at the center of the plus at the top, center of the plus at the bottom, which means that my line is really nice and straight. All right, so we have our center, center front line. I'm gonna go ahead with my straight ruler and I'm just gonna mark out all the straight lines that I can see. So I wanna make sure for the bust line, we're keeping a nice 90 degree angle. I have my dart, I can see my vanishing point. We start. So you're just tracing the lines from your initial drape? Yes, so I'm tracing all the straight lines from the initial drape. Now, when I do my curved lines, I wanna make sure that I have 90 degree angles um, everywhere before I curve my line. So I can see that this, this curved line under here is that shape, I wanna make sure I've got a nice square at each of these because that's gonna sew into the back of the garment. Um, and if it comes down in a point, then at the side seam, you end up with that shape. So we wanna make sure where the seam is, it's nice and even. So I like to take my straight ruler and just mark those angles ahead of time. And you had mentioned before that if your markings on your muslin drape were kind of faint, you could, it would help to go and clean up your lines with a pencil directly on the muslin before this step. Yes, yeah. I cleaned up all my lines and straightened. Some of them are curved because the body is curved. Um, I straightened out those lines with a ruler ahead of time and I made them nice and dark so that I could see through the paper. Okay, so I'm gonna use my curved ruler and down here on the waistline, it's not, a very curved moment. You want to use the smoother um, side of your curve ruler. And just speaking from my own experience, students always want like a definitive where on the ruler should I use it? And it's like you got to learn to kind of feel these things out for yourself and kind of figure out where you need the slightest curve a little bit more curve, what is starting to look more natural and kind of get a feel for these things. That's been my experience. Yes. So you'll see that I switched, um, I switched curved rulers. You can still use your French curve and get the same shape. I tend for the armholes, it's more curved. So I like, um, I like this other curve ruler. 
but you can do whichever one you'd like. So here you just want to have a really nice smooth curve so it's not kind of a weird shape or anything. No wobbly lines. From here we want to make sure that we mark our vanishing point is the end, um, the end of our dart. So we want to come in a half inch to the inside of that, which is actually where we're going to stop. Um, that's where we're going to mark on our pattern. We mark it in red so that it's always kind of called out to us um, when we transfer our pattern onto fabric. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write the center front. And now, I can pull out my muslin. Now we need to add in our seam allowance. So for this, for the neckline, I'm gonna give it a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, we're not sewing in a collar, we're not finishing off this neckline. So um, around a neckline, usually if you are attaching a collar, you want it to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's smaller, um, a collar is a much smaller area, so you don't wanna have a huge amount of thick, thick seam allowance. Um, for an armhole, you're still sewing into a sleeve. You, you do want a little bit more, so for your armhole, you're going to do a half inch. For your neckline, you'll do a quarter. Everything else will be a half inch. So I'm just going to use my see-through ruler to mark in my quarter of an inch seam allowance, making sure that I keep my 90 degree angle nice and smooth. So this is going to be a half inch seam allowance. Once we get down in this area, right now I'm going to draw in my half inch seam allowance. Ignore your darts. We're going to get to that in just a minute. So now with our dart area, we want to make sure that we're truing our darts. So what that means is closing the dart the way that it's going to be sewn together on the body. Um, so that we make sure that it's a nice smooth transition at the bottom of the dart. Okay, so with our dart, what we want to do is um, when, when we're folding our dart for the horizontal um, darts, we want to fold so that the seam allowance goes down. And then for a vertical dart, we want to go towards the side seam. So I find it sometimes easier just to stick a pin in temporarily to hold that together. And I want to take my curve ruler and just smooth out that transition line. Okay. Um, we can use our tracing wheel and trace that shape. And you'll see when we open it up, if I draw along the dots here, you can see how it added the extra shaping. So if you, if you forget to do shaping, this is what happens. If I just cut along this line, then when I close my sample dart, you can see it fits in the front, but look at the back. It doesn't fit because it doesn't have that extra shaping in the corner. So on fabric, what you would be doing is trying to align it so that it lines up perfectly at the top, and that's gonna shift the entire direction of the bottom half of your dart. Um, and you're gonna end up with a weird bump somewhere in your garment. So it's really important that we add in our shaping so that it stays even along the top. So that's why those little corners are important. So our center front is good. You can just put it on the fold. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the back. I'm gonna start with a center back line using my dot paper to line it up. 
When I was in school, I was taught to tape my muslin to my pattern paper and use a tracing wheel, but I like your method better. I think, I mean, I think for beginners, I would actually encourage students to tape the muslin to the table and then kind of secure everything a little bit more because you know, you're a pro at this, so you know what you're doing. But for beginners, I would recommend that. But I think that this one actually is easier and faster than the tracing wheel method. Yeah, so you can definitely do the tracing wheel um, instead, of, um, instead of putting this on top, you can, put your, um, you can put your muslin on top, line it up, and then use your tracing wheel and your all to mark information through your pattern or through. I think that's only really uh, important if your paper is not see-through, if you yeah. don't end up getting the dot paper. Yeah, if you're using like butcher paper or something like that, you would want to use this method to mark all the little dots, um, mark the punch holes, and then pull it off and trace the markings that you left with your tools. But if your papers, if you're using dot paper, it's pretty see-through, you can, um, you can just mark that information. So again, I'm just truing my 90 degree angles. At this point, um, sometimes, I, sometimes I'll sometimes i take the shoulder dart, and this seems like a pretty wide one. Um, I would normally take it down and shift out this dart amount down to about a half an inch, which means the additional, about an inch that's up here would need to shift into a waist dart. Uh, for the sake of today's tutorial, I'm gonna keep it very basic, so I'm gonna leave this shoulder dart as is. But if you wanna see in a future video how to shift out dart seams, um, let us know in comments and we'll, we'll definitely um, shoot something down the road uh, for kind of this next advancement in this project. So this is gonna be my center back. And I'm gonna do the same thing where a half inch in, I'm gonna mark punch hole in red and I'm going to add in my seam allowances and that's not just a Mariah thing Pun marking those punch holes in red is the industry standard so that your cutters do not forget to put those there it's like red is a very eye-catching color and that's why it's used to make those marks So I'm going to shape my dart once again. And you can see how it's already causing the, the slope of the shoulder blade, even in the paper. If um, you were doing custom work, this would be great for someone who had like very prominent shoulder blades. Like that would fit them really well. So if you wanted a... Um, smaller shoulder blade shape, then you would shift that dart out to the waistline. Okay, so we also wanna make sure that our, um, our side seams and our shoulders, which are getting sewn together, um, are trued as well. So I'm gonna close it. So you can do this two ways. You can either close it, stick a pen in to hold it, and line them up together um, or you can um, you can take your ruler and do it measurement wise so you're measuring how wide your shoulder seam is and measuring it against your neckline you want to true um, true your shoulder seams so that they line up exactly um, mine look a little bit different so I'm gonna check them against each other, and it looks like there's about a half inch difference. Um, that's 
likely because I just took a shorter shoulder on one side and a longer shoulder on the other. So you wanna make sure that they're the same. Um, in looking at the form, it looks like I can come in about a quarter of an inch on this shoulder and just reshape that out. In your corner. And I'm just gonna mark this so I know when I'm cutting it out that this is now gone. That's gonna get cut away. So now this is a quarter of an inch shorter. Now I wanna make up the rest of the difference on the other side. So this one also needs to get a quarter of an inch longer. If you missed one of Mariah's earlier videos, she talked about working both metric and imperial system, working for different designers. And so that's why she keeps flipping back and forth because she's kind of comfortable that way. If you were confused why she's using both sides of the ruler. Yes, I, I go back and forth between both. Uh -huh. So now if I close it, and I take this measurement, so I'll do it, this one in centimeters, so that I know that it's pretty accurate. Let's see. So my new line is gonna be 11 centimeters. And I wanna make sure on here that it is at 11 centimeters. So I wanna do the same thing, and it's called walking your pattern. Um, it's the technical term for it because you're kind of just walking it along those seams. And it looks like this one is about a 16th of an inch longer. So I wanna just true that up a 16th of an inch shorter so it lines up exactly. So for those of you not working on dot paper, I have also used a light box when I've used thicker papers that I can't see the other line you know, through the paper, or you could fold back the seam allowance on one side and then line it up with the other seam. So those are some methods you can use if you do not have dot paper. And always make sure that you're measuring your sew line, not your seam allowance yes. line. Always measure your sew line. Your sew line through here. Oh, and then labeling. So, um, for the back, I would have, for this one, since my front is gonna be on the fold, for my back, I'm gonna add a half inch seam allowance because maybe that's got a zipper in it. Um, if you were gonna add a button closure, you would add a placket, so that's gonna be, you know, again, a more advanced um, pattern down the road. But for now, if you were putting in a zipper, you would just add your regular seam allowance to the back. Um, and then you wanna mark your, um, your grain line. So you want it to follow your center back. I'm just gonna mark a line. And then I'm doing my arrows up and down. That shows that this is gonna line up along the selvage edge of the fabric. Um, so that's gonna be my grain line. So then you would write your name, whatever the pattern is. I'll put bodice, which is just a fashion-y term for shirt. Um, <laughs> And what piece of the pattern is it? You know, if you're making pants, is it the pocket? Is it the waistband? Is it the front leg or the back leg? So this is gonna be my center back, which you can write out center back or CB stands for center back. And then whatever size it is. Um, this one is a size six um, dress form. So I'll put size six. And then you would put the cut information. So for this one, if it's the back, I'd be cutting two, um, one on each side. So I would write cut to self um, and self just means your main fabric so this is going to give you all of your cut information um, and pattern information so i'm going to do the same thing for my center front can um, i interject yeah. with a pet peeve so do you see how mariah marked her green line with the double arrows those double arrows are actually important because if you the, the way the reason you do this is you're signaling to your marker makers and your cutters that it can be done this way or this way. Up or if down. you have one arrow, you're signaling to your cutters and everybody that you have a, you're using a fabric 
that requires it to be cut in a specific direction. Yes. So things with a nap like velvet or suede or something with a very specific print that you need to be going in one direction, that's when you mark it with a single arrow. So pay attention to those things on your pattern. I've already got my center front line, so I'm just gonna mark my arrows on both sides of my center front line, and I would write the same information. Your name, what it is, cutting one self, and you can write the words on fold, meaning that you're cutting it against the fold. Um, so you can line this up on the edge, um, on the fold line of your fabric. Or if you, um, like if you're, if you're working at home, obviously you can just fold over your fabric and line this up along the edge. If you're uh, manufacturing and you have um, a factory that's cutting your fabric, they're not cutting one piece of fabric. They're laying out a whole pile, you know, maybe 30 layers of fabric and cutting. So you would never do your pattern um, just as a cut on the fold. You would wanna trace off the other half of your pattern so that you have a full flat pattern, um, in which case you wouldn't write cut on the fold. Um, and then size. Hey, party people. So I know you love Mariah and everything, but we had some technical difficulties with the remaining footage of this tutorial. So I'm gonna wrap things up on my own. The only thing we really have to go over is cutting and notching. Match up all your seams. So Mariah had mentioned before walking the pattern. You need to match up all your seams and make sure that you're getting all the curves looking good as they're connected, right? So when you match your sew lines on the shoulder, you want to make sure that you like this curve of your armhole because that's the way it's going to connect and wrap over your shoulder. You don't want anything coming to a funny point or coming to a funny point like this. Okay, You want that nice curve. That's why Mariah had kept insisting on those uh, 90 degree angles. Check here to make sure you're getting this nice curve. And your neckline and any other connecting point in your garment needs to be walked and checked for how well they flow into the next pattern piece. When you are cutting out a symmetrical piece or something on the fold like this, you can fold it and trace everything out again on the other side. Or what I like to do is fold it and staple everything and just make sure that the fold is really flat and smooth and perfect when you're stapling everything down and then make sure you smooth out any potential bubbles and then cut everything out together and then when I have everything still stapled and folded I put in my punch holes and I put in my notches so what I do is I take my awl and I punch through those marks Mariah made so that I get the hole on the other side. And when this gets laid out, you can take your pen, your marking pen, and just kind of put a little dot there or you can punch through to the fabric, all kinds of different things. But it's nice to have the punch hole in the actual paper. Before we talk about notching, I just want to go over something we forgot before. This is where, when you're labeling, this is where you put your style number. I have a whole video on style numbers, and you might think that's a weird thing to have a video about, but I promise you having an organized system for your style numbers will help you, especially if you are starting your own brand. So what I like to do is put number whatever I've decided to designate, right? Every single one of your pattern pieces for that style is gonna have the st same style number. And so even if you see a loose sleeve or sleeve cuff, as long as it has the style number on it, you're gonna know what's, what pattern it belongs to. This style number will go on your pattern cards. It will go on all your tech packs. That's how it will be referred to always. So all your pattern pieces should have your style number on there. 
when you're cutting everything out, Remember, Mariah went over the having that extra dart overlay, you know, folding it over and making sure we have enough fabric, all those good things. Sometimes when you have a very big dart, I like to go ahead and just add in the seam allowance and then cut into it. Because when you're doing production and you're trying to make markers, and you're trying to fit all these little pattern pieces together as closely as possible, sometimes you can really get away, you know, obviously it's not going to lay like this in real life because we're not following the grain line, but there will be cases where not cutting right there can save you a lot of room on your fabric. Also, if you have like a big dart like this, you don't want like a giant clump of fabric back here. So it's nice to cut that away. On to notching. So number one, notch your darts. That's how you're gonna find them. So you're gonna have a punch hole or a mark here and you're gonna dart both sides of your darts. That's how in your fabric, when you have no markings and you don't know what's going on, you can look for it. What you'll do when you're sewing is you will fold this over, match your notches, Make sure the fold includes your punch hole. So one half inch past the punch hole to your notches. And that's how you sew your darts. And that's why we mark them the way we do. Then you notch the matching notch. Notches always have to have a partner. Doesn't make sense not to. This is my bust dart. And so I'm gonna have a matching notch right there. Honestly, for a seam this short, it's really not necessary. But as you get longer seams and more complicated garments, you most definitely want that corresponding notch to help you match up your seams. So that's just kind of something I'm throwing out there so that maybe you get into the habit of it. Again, at the shoulder, I notched the dart. And you may be thinking, well, Zoe, you already have the seam allowance there, so why do you need to notch that? With these notches and this punch hole, it really signifies that this is a dart and not some weird style shape. Okay, so that's the dart. And then there's the notch that corresponds with that shoulder dart. And all these things help give clues that all these pieces belong to the same garment. Center fronts are always notched, so center front at the neck, center front at the waist. If you have a sleeveless style like this, you don't need armholes. If we were going to draft a sleeve to fit this armhole, what you would do is mark one about here, like right in the deep curve, and notch it. And then the back armhole would have a double notch, also in the curviest part of your arm. And then the notches on your sleeve pattern would match these notches. When you do double notches, don't make them any closer than 3 8 half an inch. Because if you make them super close, that fabric gets super flimsy and it can rip right off. Same with the paper. It'll get super flimsy and rip right off. So have armhole notches if you're doing a sleeve. If it's sleeveless, it's not necessary. Double notches always signify that it's a back piece. And so here along your center back, I have these double notches. Because since this is a sleeveless style, I don't have these. Okay, and so I have these double notches here to signify that this is a back pattern piece. And often what a lot of people do is they'll put it along center back. If there's some kind of zipper, you can put the, you know how there's like a notch at the bottom of the zipper. If it's along center back, you can have a double notch. If there is no closure or if this is the back and it's all no seam on the fold, 
all one piece, then you can have a double notch at the neck like this, and that signifies that that's the back piece. When you're notching, this is a notcher, and you don't need one. You can cut little slips out with scissors if you like, but this is approximately 517 times faster. And a lot of people like to notch like this, lining up the point with the line. I actually prefer doing the reverse so I can see the line in that hole, and that to me is more accurate. In terms of labeling, and corrections. I had noted before that if you're making corrections, that if you're not a pro like Mariah, you probably want to erase things and redraw them. And I've had some students who try to use another color instead, but you need to be really careful with that because patterns are color coded. Number one, the self fabric pattern pieces are always marked in a pencil or black. Lining pieces are always marked with green. So if there are things that are worked with on green on a pattern, people are gonna get confused. All interfacing pieces will be marked with a red. If you have a contrast fabric, like let's say this is yourself and then you have a different fabric for the sleeve, your contrast is, will be marked with blue. If you have a second contrast, it can be marked with purple. It just can't be black, red, or green. This is a kind of unnecessary thing if you're not doing patterns on the regular, but this is one of my favorite things. Oh, this is like 500 pounds. This is a bunny punch or a rabbit punch, and that is the technical term for it, because it looks like a bunny from the side. Basically, it is a 500 pound, I also use it as a paperweight, hole punch, and what you do is you take all your pattern pieces, and and it makes a giant hole. Make sure you go into your pattern. You don't want it to be too close to the edge so that it's easily ripped away. And this is a pattern hook. You hook it and you hang it on a rod like this and you'll hang your pattern card in front of your pattern always. So you have your pattern card with the flat of your design at the front and then all your pattern pieces behind it and then you hang it on a dress rack. Do you really need a bunny punch especially if you don't have a ton of cash? No, but it's nice to have like a big hole punch but do go ahead and punch a hole or cut a hole and get some pattern hooks to get you organized. And that wraps up this tutorial. Please do let me know in the comments if you have any questions for me or Mariah. Do let me know if you love Mariah and want her back in the studio. We're also cooking up some sewing tutorials. I know so many of you asked for zipper sewing tutorials. We're gonna get on that ASAP. And as always, hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic, and I will see you in the next video.